Hello, mm. hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to Mark <laughs> number 40. Technically, we've only got 12 more of these to do, and then the show would be a year old, I guess. Oh, okay. Which is, yeah, like I always say, it's a lot longer um, than I thought we would be doing this. I thought we would have long, long finished this now. So thanks, everyone. I told you, people questions. people love it when, uh, when yeah, you get that, that interaction, social interaction of losers. Um, answering people's questions. Whoa. Losers. <laughs> You're all losers. No, hello, guys, and welcome to Art Smart number 40. Um, I hope everyone's all right. Uh, if you're watching this as it goes live, happy Friday. Uh, people that are listening, have a great day. And um, people that are watching it now, hope you've had a great day. Um, happy weekend. And then if you're in the uh, the UK, three day weekend, baby. Ooh, ooh, unless you work in, you know, like the the normal services retail. Yeah. yeah. If you're basically, if you're an office dweller, three day weekend. Ooh, ooh. Um, <laughs> I'd say office. Bedroom dweller. This is where I'm you're self-employed. Self- if you're self-employed, do you pay yourself more money for working on a bank holiday? I would. <laughs> Congratulations, me. Yes, I am amazing. Can I afford <laughs> this? Yes, I can. Then I shall do it. Um anyway, hope everyone's all right. Hope you're okay. How are you, Mark? How are you today? Have you had a good I'm week? Okay. And are you looking forward yeah. to your three days off? What are you up to? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I have itchy feet. Um, not because I want to go anywhere, but because I've got insect bites on both feet, um, which are bugging me. So, um, I mean, at the moment they're okay, but only because I've got just like done up my trainers like super tight. So it's probably just reduced blood flow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just going to drop off. You're going to have stumps. <laughs> oh, at this point, oh. Um, <laughs> No, and um, yeah, I, I sort of found out that the uh, the Paralympics have have started, and I was like, yeah. oh, ooh, oh, that's what you've start done. It. You want to you want to do the Paralympics, <laughs> don't you? That's... Get, 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 yeah, I want some of those bionic feet. Oh. <clears throat> Mate, I would. I'd happily have them. I, I, I'd, I'd rather the knee knee down though. I wouldn't. I wouldn't yeah. want the like, the whole leg. Knee down's fine. And and better a foot than a hand. Yeah, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. As long as it's from the knee down, I've still got the the bit my, my, my look at me, look at us going. Well, if my leg's chopped <laughs> off, I'm going to be this picky. If if I could lose a limb, yeah, <laughs> at will, at <laughs> will, yeah. Below, and then I'd have um, yeah. Then maybe some gadgets. Oh, you got a Bluetooth in it, haven't you? That's that's the golden <laughs> speaker and built in your leg. You can One of those like smartphone. trackers, like like when you lose your keys as well. <laughs> <laughs> like when you when you get a message on something, your leg vibrates. <laughs> Guys, anyway, um, just, we're here to I, talk about scuba diving. Yeah, our disabled viewers, do that does that exist? Let us know in the comments below. Do you have an artificial leg or arm with Bluetooth and vibrate that also has a speaker in it? Let's let us know below. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Questions, like Mark says, questions, questions, questions. So the first one is from Emma H eighty nine. Um, mm-hmm. And how dare you, Emma? How dare you? Hashtag ask Mark question about bolt snaps. Sorry, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm wearing my emotional bolt snap yeah, t shirt and everything. Uh, I've got my. That, that wasn't even planned. I know. I've got my two minute foundation tea that's on there. I bought one. That whale has a name now, I think. I can't remember what it was. They, they did like a competition or something uh, a couple Pete, of weeks back. Plastic Pete. It's Peter. Peter. The, it's not. It's probably Wally. <laughs> let's be honest. It's going to be Wally or yeah. Noah. It's going to be no, Wally. Knowing the internet, it, it's like whale, M- whale, whale face, face or something. Yeah. <laughs> That's a given. Anyway, back to the question. Yeah. Says, yeah. Question about bolt snaps. Uh, sorry, Sean. Mm-hmm. I've noticed that a few of my bolt snap mechanisms are getting a bit stiff, although I wash okay. slash... slash Soak them after every dive. Can I have some mm-hmm. bolt snap maintenance tips, please? Uh, burn them. Uh, throw them in the ocean. Uh, how do I get the bolt snap mechanisms uh, back to the smooth operation like when I get them? Cheers. Um, yeah. I don't know. Mark, help. Sorry. An e- I, got, I got sidetracked. An email pinged up. You probably heard the ping. <laughs> oh, I just got it as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, um, so the mechanism... 
yeah, the, you're, you're already doing the right thing instead of soaking them, uh, getting them clean, but also make sure that they dry out thoroughly. So if you like hang them on a line, just to make sure that they drip dry as much as possible. But then if you use like uh, olive oil, some kind of natural oil, kind of drip it into the mechanism, uh, work it, and, uh, and some of the debris might be sort of picked up. So when you like put it in, give it a good action, uh, sort of give it a good go. And then afterwards kind of let the uh, the oil drip out and see if the oil drips out clean. If it's dripping out clean, it should be okay. But it also helps to sort of coat the spring, get into all the little nooks and crannies. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, sort of make sure it's nice and smooth. Um, I think you can use stuff like WD-40 if you want, but if it's going into the ocean, then it's not the best so it's better to use like some kind of natural oils um and yeah just um make sure they're completely bone dry uh, so yeah mm. sort of hang them up as much as possible so they do dry out completely because otherwise you give them a soak you give them a clean that's great gets all the salt and anything out but then if you just take it out and throw it in your gear bag then there's still moisture inside of that um, sort of barrel so you need to get that water out so yeah a little bit of oil just helps to sort of coat it make it a bit hydrophobic and uh, yeah sort of keep it nice and clean um, but yeah nice smooth action is what you're after cool um i could actually throw my two cents in burn them Gun all it. burn them all no just just um, burn it melt it down melt it down and then make a new bolt snap out of it uh no um from the cycling world there's a cleaning brand and a lubrication brand called muck off um you've probably mm -hmm. heard of them mark mm -hmm. um and they obviously deal with all types of cleaning and lube mechanisms um mm -hmm. but a lot of it's um, harmless. I was going to say harmful. A lot of them's okay. harmless to the environment. They're very environmentally okay. friendly, environmentally mm -hmm. concerned. So a lot of the uh, the liquids and the materials that they use to clean and maintain and lubricate things actually don't mm. harm the environment. Um, I can't guarantee that for everything that they do, but the majority of the products that everyday, you know, everyday products that you you would use on your bike or mm. your motorcycle, um, yeah. It's definitely something because they do. Um, you could almost look into a, like uh, you could do a wet lube and dry lube. So if mm -hmm. you're in going in conditions where it's wet, you put mm -hmm. the wet lube on, and what that does is that reacts to the the, the water. It's a mm -hmm. resin based, and then that repels any dust or molecules or dirt actually building up into it. Whether that works under water, mm -hmm. I don't know. But if you're doing yeah. a, a wet wash. You could almost mm. wet it off with the the wet lube, or the, the they they do ceramic lube, which is really really cool. Um, but yeah, do that with the on the springing mechanism, um, and then mm. let it dry naturally, and then that in theory might work as well. Um, Interesting. Yeah, muck off they're called. They're massive in okay. the in the in the um, cycling world and the motorcross mm, yeah. world. They're massive. So if you want to <clears throat> look that up. Uh, go head mm. over to our, our sister company, Dirk Bite Bits. They sell DBD. loads of DBD. They sell loads of muck off gear. Um, mm -hmm. uh, then okay. uh, email mark at mark loves mark mark .co .uk <laughs> and he will give you his discount code so you can get a ton of money <laughs> off of muck off. But yeah, it's definitely. But yeah, I don't know whether the, the ceramic stuff for like, obviously I know it's bike chains and stuff and a lot of people put it in the, the spring in their derailers. Um, and it mm -hmm. works an absolute dream. Okay. So yeah, it could 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 work for that as well. Um, and if it does, maybe we should go. Can we have some muckle from Simply Scuba? That yeah, be pretty yeah, cool. get some crossover products. Yeah, because they're they, they're cleaning stuff. They have a, a yeah. bike cleaning stuff, but I use it for for home homeware. Literally, yeah, I put it on yeah. the side. Literally, leave it thirty seconds, and it cleans everything. Like. I've got, um, not in the house that I live at the moment, but my previous house, you know, a very mm. traditional stainless steel, you know, tub for the for the kitchen. I just sprayed some mm. muck off into that, um, wiped it down, and it was gleaming. And everything that was in it wasn't harmful to the environment. So you could literally flush yeah, it down, yeah. and it, it was absolutely fine. It's not like, you, you know, you look at Sillet Bang, and then it melts the face off a fish, because um, yeah. that stuff is awful. <laughs> but... You know, it makes everything look 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 shiny. But yeah, cool. Um, any other tips? Interesting. Yeah, do you guys and girls have any other tips for lubricating and you know your springs and you know bolt bolt snap maintenance? If you do, um, write a letter uh, and then put that letter in the fire, <laughs> um, and I will receive it. 
don't comment about <clears throat> it below. No, please do. Obviously, <laughs> please, please comment below. Um, so let's let's move on. Uh, question number two is from Larry. What up, Larry? Mm -hmm. uh, it says hashtag Ask Mark. Hey guys, I have a question. Good mm -hmm. because if you didn't, it would be very <laughs> weird that it was <laughs> it be, on be on the show. show. It would not be on <laughs> the show. Um, anyway, so Larry says uh, a friend of mine recently asked about good gifts for scuba divers. And I gave her a few okay. options uh, at different price ranges. After giving their response, I started to wonder if uh, if it's a good gift for me. And then, you know, he says, my birthday is soon and I would love a new camera uh, by the GoPro. Uh, what would you... What would you suggest? Uh, uh, what would you suggest as gifts for divers who may already have their own gear at a price range of under a hundred pounds, a hundred pounds mm. to two hundred and fifty, and then above, basically? So gifts, yeah, expensive. Uh, what you need to do is go to simplyscuba.com, type in flappy snag hazard, and buy a flappy snag hazard mug <laughs> because we still have them in stock from about. We do, yeah, Christmas we do. We do ago. have a few for now. No one's um, bought them because no one knows what it is on the website. But obviously, YouTubers. They... They do know. In fact, I will, yeah, I will link or... it. I will link it below. <laughs> Go on there Someone and buy, buy one. Uh, gift ideas. Yeah, there, there's quite a few bits and bobs. If if someone already like has all their own gear, it's quite hard to like buy them a mask or like a pair of fins or something because mm. that's quite that's quite a personal decision. Also, as well, um, it depends on how much you know that person or like said person. Yeah, yeah. Well, once you're getting into the like 250 pounds and mm. above, then yeah, you really like this person. <laughs> um, Maybe cameras, a little bit too cameras much. are yeah, cameras are pretty expensive. Um, that that is an indulgent gift. Um, but for the the sort of the the smaller stuff, like under 50 quid sort of stuff, um, dry bags and stuff, they're always useful. Um, I'll always uh, appreciate a good dry bag. Uh, oh. Bolt snaps as well. Nah, um, nah, dry bags. Always yes, bolt snaps. A are. nice. <laughs> The bolt snaps are the kind of thing that you get with your spools or whatnot, but it is never really a fancy bolt snap or anything. So you can get them like quite a nice bolt snap, like a X deep uh, sort of NX range, because um, that's not really something that you like treat yourself to. It's like, oh, is it worth it? And you kind of um and are it where when it's a when it's a birthday or Christmas present, then yeah, it's quite easy. Um, if you're getting into the more like expensive stuff, anything with like a nautical theme, um, I mean, even my uh, my headphone hanger uh, is like a little octopus kind of thing, which is kind of cool. Um, and um, I mean, there's there's stuff like models for divers. Um, they're quite cool. It's more for like techie divers, but you can literally build uh, your own like real model of a diver you can choose what color their dry suit is the different types of fins different like cylinder configurations different rebreathers whether they dive with a dpv or not uh, and you basically get this this little model and uh, and it's yeah the, the scuba guy and he's either swimming through a wreck or something or whatever it is um they're not particularly cheap but um yeah there is quite nice for someone who is like really deeply into their scuba diving so that's worth checking out um brace net and um uh cape clasp they make quite cool um sort of like scuba diving jewelry uh whether it's made from old like fishing line or something some ghost gear or uh, sort of cape clasp and it's got a bit more of a sort of like ocean theme they're kind of cool um yeah it's it's tough i mean one of the biggest sellers that we used to have was um hang air um mm. sean will cringe hearing the <laughs> The term hang air. Oh. Um, every Christmas video, it's... mate. Every Christmas video we did. Let's do a gift. Oh, I wonder what number one's going to be. Oh, ruddy people, hang air. People love them because it's it makes sense and it works for all scuba divers because it's a it's a broad shouldered um, hanger, <laughs> but um, not just that. It actually has like a little fan built into it. So you put your dry suit or your wet suit onto it, you hang it up and then you switch it on. And, uh, and yeah, it like blow dries the inside of your suit. So it's nice and fresh. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah. And dive watches, all that kind of stuff. It's, um, like yeah, a there is plenty of stuff out there. Yeah. A Tarek, if you're feeling yeah. particularly charitable. <laughs> Someone at work's um, birthday, they go diving. Just, I'm yeah, a Tarek. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> Uh, I mean, DSMBs, they're always cool. It's always nice to have a, a fancy DSMB. Um, 
Yeah, it, it's tough. We we don't really have. I mean, books and stuff are always interesting. It's always interesting to have a, a interesting book um, that uh, that sort of goes into it. I know, um, but otherwise. No, it's kind of tough, especially when they have all their own gear. And even if they don't, it's hard just to, like, he, he's a mask. Thanks. It's not the one that I was looking for, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, yeah. There's the, there's plenty out there, but, uh, yeah, no, like, little sort of bits and bobs and knickknacks and stuff. It's just kind of like spare parts. But, yeah, dry bags, bolt snaps. Yeah, they're always good, always yeah. handy. The the flappy snap ha- snap hazard because you said bolt snap. The That's different, yeah. Flappy snag hazard, my guys. There's only four left in stock. Oh, I don't even have one. No, <laughs> no, no. I I I had a rude version of it that someone in the office made for me one Christmas. Yeah, um, yeah and then I, I left that. it there thinking oh, I'll be right. I'll be back in the office in a couple of months, and I'm not. Um, no, no. That, that got thrown in the trash because they certainly could not take that mug to their charity shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys. Yeah. Um, tips, you've got any gift ideas? Let us know below. Other than obviously the flappy snag hazard mug, um, which is only available at simplyscuba.com. And once they've sold out, we will definitely not be making them again. Um, oh, I don't know. Not the flappy snack has it. I would love to do mugs, more mugs yeah. this season. But yeah, I don't think that happened this year, personally. It's oh, no, probably bit, not this year. Yeah, a yeah. bit too late. We, yeah, we need to. <laughs> anyway, that's that's internal politics. We're not going to talk about that. We've already had a depressing conversation about that this morning. Uh, yeah, gift ideas, guys. Let us know in the comments. So question number three is from Jay. He says, hashtag ask Mark. Obviously, he goes, hi, guys. What up, Jay? Uh, I just bought the X Deep Zen backplate system. Nice one. Do I need mm-hmm. to take the weight off? Uh, the weight off of it? Um, off my, oh, mate. Uh, the weight of it off. That's it. I'm yeah. Jumping words, yeah. mate. Anyway, yeah, off my weight <laughs> belt. Thanks. Yeah, words, words and tings. Uh, so going from a recreational BCD to like a Zen, would you need to take the weight of the? BCD of the Zen off of your white belt. No, that's not quite how buoyancy works. Um, what do you know? Might Mark? be able. What do you know? I know. <laughs> um, so chances are is that your recreational BCD, if you were diving a recreational BCD, is a bit more buoyant than the Zen. If you completely emptied the uh, the bladders and then literally just put them in the water. Because the Zen is made out of either stainless steel or uh, or that kind of, it's like a aluminium magnesium adamantium or something. Yeah, some fancy metal because it's up deep. Um, if you put them both in the water, you'll probably find that the X deep one would be a little bit more negatively buoyant than the uh, the recreational one because of the plastics and stuff. They tend to be a bit more buoyant, so you need a bit more lead to help you get down. Um, I wouldn't drop too many, but whenever you do change your equipment, um, like substantially, if if you're changing torches, I wouldn't worry too much. But if you're changing BCDs or changing wetsuits, then yeah, I'd do a weight check before or at the beginning of my next dive just to make sure I'm wearing the correct amount of lead. Um, there's no, you can't really take the specific dry weight of a product and say, right, because this weighs a pound less or half a kilo less, then you, you can't really equate that to the buoyancy. Mm. It, it's literally the, the buoyant weight, whether it sinks or floats, that's what you need to uh, take into account. Um, so, I mean, I'd personally do a dive. Um, I'd start off with my normal amount of lead, do a weight check, and then if I am substantially negatively buoyant, then I take off some lead there and then. So try and make your first dive somewhere safe, like a lake or somewhere without any current, um, without any great depth, somewhere where you can get to the, the side, the shore uh, pretty easy. So that way, if you can like take some lead off, put it there and then have your surface cover, whoever it is, just sort of run it back so it doesn't get pinched. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of what I do. But yeah, you do need to do that proper weight check as soon as you make any like 
major changes to um, uh, to your overall kit configuration or if you're diving anywhere new um, but going from a recreational wing to a backplate and harness if it is the aluminium backplate there won't be that much difference if it's the stainless steel one uh, then yeah you will have quite a heavy backplate uh, and that's what it's there for so yeah you probably can take one maybe two kilos of lead off your weight belt um, but yeah just just do a, a buoyancy check uh, next time you uh, you go for a dive with it and just see how much or how little lead you can get away with. Awesome. Sweet. Well done, Dave. Yeah, a lot of people I don't I don't think buoyancy is taught very well in um in courses well, then, because it's you need to do something about that, Mark. <laughs> and yeah, I know you don't you, I know right. you're trying not to <laughs> and every week pretty much we mention buoyancy and I'm like deep dive dude, come on. A deep dive on buoyancy. Yeah. I feel like I've done a video on it already, though. Because, yeah, the, the dry weight of a product, it it does matter, but it's it's not the uh, the be-all and end-all of just, oh, okay, well, yeah, this is yeah 500 grams more heavier. Um, so that means I can take that off my weight belt. It, it's not. It's, it's the buoyancy. Um, and, yeah, that's really hard to measure, so manufacturers don't do it. <laughs> disappointed me that was a fantastic <laughs> answer but i'm also disappointed just just disappointed yeah, yeah. i'm not angry yeah. mark just i'm just disappointed, disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway anyway question number four let, let's let's move on he says mm -hmm. hi ask mark and everyone i didn't know that our smart could talk Talk us, Mark. Yeah. It's a, it's a sentient being member of the chat. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. <laughs> uh, anyway, hello. It says, I would love your advice. Well, we don't want to give it to you. So next question. Yeah. <laughs> no. He goes, I use hard soles, uh, the Maris Flexor 5 mil, size 8. I'm a size 41 okay. to 42 all year long. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of buying the RK3. Should I go for the RK3 large or medium size? Do you recommend the standard mm -hmm. version or the HD? I dive mostly in the Mediterranean Sea and in the Red Sea in Sinai. Sinai? Sinai. Uh, Sinai. Uh, wetsuit only. Yeah. And then question mark. Okay. Uh, I'm, I am more tends to... Uh, there ain't... Uh, hold on. English, I'm guessing, talk, isn't there. Talk amongst yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Can you hear the cogs? Uh, I'm, he's leaning more to the uh, standard RK3 because of the, the regular buoyancy, ones. yeah. And maybe I should yeah. put in another consider, like power slash less weight, etc. So, yeah, RK3s again mm. for the second week in a row. We might as well just yeah, call this um, the RK3 show. <laughs> Ask uh, as RK3. far as sizes... Uh, as far as sizes go, um, that was one of the big issues when the RK3 came out, uh, is that they didn't produce a size chart, and I don't think they have yet, because they wanted to encourage divers to go into their dive centres and try them on, um, which doesn't really work in our modern climate of, okay, yeah, try and reduce your travel and all that kind of stuff, and don't go somewhere if you don't have to. Um, I, was, I was one of the first people to actually create one i literally took Ew. different size boots i know because this is why i'm mentioning it because it took me so long um i took each size boots uh sort of off the shelf and tried them in different size boots and i built an actual size chart for the rk3s um and um because i was i was searching around see if anyone else had done it and no one had done it so i was like oh screw it i'm just gonna do it myself and um and yeah, sort of built this size chart for a size eight. I think a large uh, is kind of perfect. And that's another thing. It's good that you specify the actual boot because the Mara's flexor with the uh, with the hard sole is going to be a little bit bigger than like the classic NG with that soft sole. So um, yeah, with the hard sole, I think sort of size eight fits into like a large. Um, and, and that's the, the size that you should really go for. Uh, because if you go for the size down, if you go for like a medium, they'll, they'll probably fit, but they'll sit like right on the tip and, uh, and you, you're going to get a little bit of wiggle on it. Uh, and even if they do go on, trying to get them off uh, is going to be a pain because that's uh, one of the problems I have with um, or had with one of my, uh, my fins. 
they're beautiful with uh, with like five mil wetsuit boots. But then if I go and put them on my dry suit boots, they kind of fit, but only on the tip. And then they're fine. I don't get any wiggle, but trying to get them off at the end, it's, yeah, it's just like fighting, trying to get the, your, your fin off. So it's not much fun. So it's better to go for the, uh, the larger size. So yeah, large, I think, is the size that you want. As far as stiffness, for most chilled out diving, the standard one is fine. That's the ones that I dive with. Um, the the HD, I mean, granted, they didn't exist when I uh, when I bought my fins, but um, yeah, if you really do want like sheer brute force power, then yeah, go for the HD. But otherwise, yeah, the, the standard does just fine, and I can shift through the water wearing the standard ones. Uh, they don't feel floppy or anything. You do get a decent amount of thrust through the water. Um, Oh, yeah, they do perfectly fine. The only real difference uh, is that you get like a little number 70 uh, in the foot pocket. That's it. You, you, it doesn't have HD written anywhere on the fin, so, uh, so I wouldn't worry about it looking any different. Okay. We used to get that question a lot when the HD version first came out. Oh, you sent me the regular version. No, we haven't. Um, oh, how can I tell? It's like... Because you can see it clearer. No, you can see it clearer. It's not. It's not as pixelated. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the RK3 4K. Oh, come no, 8K. More. <laughs> the, the, 8K. Jap the Japanese, they've got the RK 12K, probably 20K now. <laughs> uh, no, the only difference is even on the packaging. I don't think it it might do now, but years and years ago. It didn't have HD written on it anywhere, so you had no idea unless you knew the specific manufacturer's part number. Um, but actually printed onto the fin itself, you get a teeny tiny little number 70 uh, in a circle in the foot pocket, and that's it. Um, wow. Because why? Well, because the, the mold for the RK3, they're going to be in the like thousands of pounds or dollars or whatever. So why would you make a completely different, similar just mm. with like a HD logo on it. Um, well, we've been and to like double your cost. And it's mm -hmm. basically a guy in a shed, so. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's a big, big shed with like a lot of um, solar nah. panels all over the room. It, it's uh, an old guy shed, asbestos roof. <laughs> it's terrible. It wasn't, yeah. it was very, very advanced. Yeah, but not as advanced yeah. as, our, still... as our warehouse at Internet Fusion. I know. Robots. Robots is the future, mate. It is. Uh, <laughs> I can't I wait. I still well, like that. I still I like that little machine at, uh, at Apex that just like uh, touches it in different places. Yeah. That was cool. Uh, I wonder how many it's, times it's all to... <laughs> they, they've put their junk in that. That's what I want to know. That's what I was going to ask. <laughs> you know that they've done it. You know that no. they've done it. No, because because I don't know how hard it, <laughs> it pushes. They do. <laughs> oh, anyway, so we're moving on to. Uh, uh, I didn't mean it. People that work in Apex, of course, you don't put your junk in measuring stuff. I'm only joking. I'm not even going to cut that out. It's going to stay in, Mark. Um, right. Sorry, children. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Stefan, Stefan, uh, he asks, or they ask. Uh, hi guys, mm -hmm. not sure if I've answered this question before. Uh, what's the best way to store your regulator sets? Hanging from the first stage slash duct cap string with the hoses and the second stage hanging, curled up and hung by the hoses in a coil, uh, in a regulator bag on a shelf, or coiled up and laying open on a shelf. What are the pros and cons? Which would be better for short term versus long term storage solutions? Single use regulators, once you've done your trip, throw them away, buy some new <laughs> ones, which are available yeah. at simplyscuba.com. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, the, the first thing is, is completely dry. Um, so give them a good thorough wash. In the uh, oven. And then dry, that dry, and then dry them thoroughly. Um, hoses like to be as straight as possible because if you bend them, especially in one small area, that external shell and even the internal uh, kind of shell can start to crack. So the, the perfect way would be in the dark, in a, uh, a sensible temperature controlled room with each of the hoses completely straight out, uh, just kind of like that. That would be perfect. 
no one has that amount of space um, <clears throat> just to uh, sort of look after their rigs. Hanging them up by the first stage, yeah, it's okay, but the uh, the hoses, because you've got the gauges and the second stage is kind of pulling down on the hose, the the, uh, the section of the hose right next to the ferrule, the uh, the metal section that kind of crimps the, uh, the squidgy rubber bit, that's going to start to pull, so you can damage your hoses. Um, you can use hose protectors to help reduce that kind of yanking force, but then you're covering up any kind of damage, so it's a double-edged sword. Um, coiling them is pretty good. Uh, again, hoses don't, they can be folded and, and bent, obviously, but if you're doing it for long periods, it's not the best. Um, Inside the regulator base, uh, regulator case or bag is uh, is pretty good. Again, you're uh, you're sort of bending the hoses, which if you can avoid it is uh, is kind of best avoided, but needs must in a lot of cases. One important thing is is to look up and see if your regulator actually has a storage function. Some regulators, like the Scuba Pro G260, uh, it actually has a, a mechanism where you can push the purge button in and then rotate it, and that kind of locks the purge button in the purge um, kind of action, and that just alleviates some of the force on the seat, so it's not bedding in quite so quickly. Um, mm. Others like Atomic, they, they do it uh, automatically. They have this uh, mechanism whenever there's no pressure uh, inside the uh, the regulator. So after you depressurize it, it actually lifts it away automatically, which is pretty clever. That's why a lot of their regulators like the T3 have a three year service in uh, service interval. Um, but yeah, for, for most, I mean, mine, Mine do get coiled and put in the uh, in the regulator bag just so that they're all together, they're contained. Um, if it's for longer periods, then yeah, I, I do something to the purge button just to uh, sort of alleviate that seat. Um, but otherwise, yeah, um, just try and keep the hoses as, as straight as you can and um, yeah, keep them in a nice temperature sensible because uh, if it goes from like freezing cold to like baking hot, you put it in the garden shed or something, then all, all the rubbers and the silicones and the greases and stuff are just going to go off um, and uh, sort of go hard and you'll just need it servicing much sooner. So it's better to have them completely dry in the dark in a nice temperature stable room and um, yeah, sort of away from the, the elements as well. Because yeah, all, all the greases, if they're exposed to... Uh, it's like a, a change in uh, in sort of gas around it, it can actually set off those um, those greases and they just disappear. So uh, your stuff on the inside isn't going to move as smoothly as uh, as previously, and you're going to need to go uh, sort of service it more frequently. If you don't use your regulators for uh, longer than six months, then they probably need a service. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Cool. We'll, we'll do a video if we haven't already. Um, yeah, I think there is a storage video. That would have popped up at some point of you talking about that. Cool. Um, I've just <clears> got <throat> an image in my mind, though, of just that one like mega rich person that loves scuba diving that has the scuba room. But it's just like one of those... Say. Yeah, but it's one of those <laughs> like one of those labs. Like They've got about three <laughs> air-conditioned units in there. The door itself yep. seals, and then you get sprayed Hermetically and stuff. sealed. Yeah. yeah and then, positive pressure environment. Yeah. It's either that or, or there's like a poorer version where someone, someone's just got their spare room and everything's all laid out nicely. But to a stranger, you walk in there and, and then it makes the guy look like a serial killer because everything's all <laughs> nice and neatly in place and positions. <laughs> What are these? Are these your tools to kill people? No, that's just an yeah. ECD. That looks like a crushing device. Yeah, I mean, for for some of them, I mean, for me, I, I've got drawers, and uh, and one of them is for for a certain like high pressure hoses. The next one is for low pressure hoses. This is for like my first and second stages, but um, it's. It, that's only for regulators that I don't use very often. So the mm -hmm. configuration that I'd need uh, kind of it fluctuates. Um, so I just tend to separate them. Yeah. Uh, but for my main regulators, yeah, they, they live in their box and that's, that's kind of it. Cool. All right, guys. How do you, how do you store yours? Let us know in the comments below. Uh, so the last question, sorry guys, there is no bonus question this week. Although it did throw me <gasps> off because the, the bonus question <clears throat> tab is there and there is 
a line, a sentence there, but that's the end of the blurb that we normally. We I know. know, that I, normally I, know. I left. I left it there to uh, to help you out. Yeah, thanks. Because I know you have to write that little bit. I do. I do. <laughs> it's really hard. It takes me at least thirty seconds. Um, anyway, <clears throat> last question is from Desert uh, FPV, or no, this is not dessert. Oh, he first, uh, yeah, it's not as desert, it's desert. Yeah, it's, it's desert. Yeah. yeah, I know, I was just seeing if I could do a dessert joke in there, but I can't. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. uh, they say, why are the Cressy Compact Pro MC9 regs so much cheaper than any other reg? Uh, are these so much worse in any way uh, that a new open water diver would notice? Uh, um, they're made out of <clears throat> Play-Doh, that's the, that's the main issue. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can't get them wet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, the I mean it's it's where you get sort of different brands and they find their niche. Um Cressy has gone down more the kind of the budget sort of side of things to uh, to appeal to that style of diver. With with regulators, especially European regulators, they have to pass very stringent uh, CE tests. So they they're not going to be a bad set of regulators. You will get some gas. If you if you have these on a cylinder and then something like an atomic T3 and you have them side by side and you literally breathe from one and then the other, you will notice a difference. Um, the atomic is going to be much smoother, uh, a lot quieter. And um, with the uh, with the, so the Cressy, it, it'll be perfectly fine. You'll, you'll get as much gas as you will need in any situation at pretty much any depth. It's just the, the overall finish to it. You might find the edges uh, aren't quite as neat and tidy, the materials themselves. Um, so they're gonna do perfectly fine. If you're not fussed on the, the packaging and stuff that comes with it and all that stuff, and the, the, the actual materials, if you don't mind, bit of plastic, does the job, then yeah, it's perfectly fine. But do do be aware that the the work of breathing and the the aftercare as well are going to be slightly different. So with more expensive regulators, they'll have relatively low work of breathing. So literally, the act of inhaling is easier, and it might not sound like much, but over time, over a long dive, it makes a huge difference. Um, so those kind of things start to add up and then yeah the the aftercare and the little features as well um you'll get some regulators you get adjustable venturis and adjustable breathing so you can customize it make it a bit more uh, sort of comfortable to your style of diving um whereas with the cressy you'll have sort of a limited uh, sort of amount of uh, choice and then like servicing as well i doubt the um the se9 is going to be expensive to uh, to service but you might have a shorter service window compared to some other regulators. Um, so all these kind of things come into mind, but there's, it'll do the job uh, is the thing. I think that uh, as a general rule, nobody can make a bad set of regulators. You you get okay and then you get good and great. You you can't really get bad regulators because I they accept have that to pass. challenge. <laughs> they're going to be if so bad, get, they're going to have a new rating. <laughs> <clears throat> if you can get it to pass ANSTI tests, then fine. Yeah, wow me. Sure. <laughs> I will do, but it but, won't be the official one. I'll just put the ANSTI, but like spell it slightly differently. <laughs> I'm like, no, look, it passed the test. <laughs> ANSTI doesn't have a Q in it, and it does now. Yeah, my one does. <clears throat> so, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like think, you say, yeah. You know, as long as they pass the test, everything's. It, it's, yeah yeah that's it's it safe, yeah. Isn't it, it comes down to yeah it comes down to design and features and materials and yeah if you just want a budget set of regulators that does the job then yeah great um but if you do want something that's not quite i call it raspy when yeah. you feel the gas there's, there's a bit of like turbulence in there you can feel it um i don't know if someone just starting out would notice the difference they're just they're getting air um but as a connoisseur um uh, who's used <laughs> most regulators on the market uh yeah you, you can notice the uh, the difference between a yeah you're we should you're, do a blind a blind you, test to see if i can actually test what you the difference are Mark, between two different second stages you are a hashtag regulator home that's what you are no no i i'd be a um sommelier 
the, the guy that sort of does different um, like drink pairings and stuff. It's yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> no. Hashtag regulator ho. I'm going with that one. We 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 lowball here at Simply Scuba, Mark. Come on. You're trying you're trying to make it first class, but we're in the gutter. Yeah, you your three sim um, oh, syllable words. No. In it, ho. mate, bro. Ho. You're a you're a ho for show. I've been watching way too much Office and 40 year old version. Thanks, Steve Corral. Cool man. Yeah. Um guys, do you have the uh Chrissy Compact Pro MC9? Let us know um, how you get on with it below, please. Um, if there's anything else, yeah, that you want to add to that, you know, may, maybe I'm, I'm going to sneeze. What? What are you doing? You're going to sneeze? Okay, you sneeze. Sneeze away from the from the mic, then, please. <coughs> ah, thanks. It's still better. It's uh, still nicer than when you blow your nose before you record, and I've got my headphones on. So I'm going to blow my nose, Sean, or, or whatever, or you cough, or yeah, you do headphone a warning. Up. Yeah, <clears throat> headphone warning, and my ears are bleeding. Anyway, guys, so on that bombshell of Mark sneezing, our mark number forty is over. Thank you. Goodbye. See you later. Life starts at forty. Life yeah. starts at forty. Well, I'm. I'm 36 this year, so I'm nearly at 40. It's really depressing, actually, turning that age. Now I'm in the different age bracket. I have to go down. I'm not in the cool oh, 20 yeah. to 20 to yeah, 34. Yeah, 25 to 35. Uh, oh. I'm in the oh, I was like, oh, 40. But like you said, Mark, Mark, life starts at 40. So excited for that. Anyway, why are we talking about this? Yeah. Scuba diving. End, end the video. End it. If. <laughs> you have any questions uh, you would like myself or Sean to answer, let us know down in the comments below. Um, if you use the hashtag AskMark, it just makes it a little bit easier for us to find. But yeah, anything to do with scuba diving, preferable. Um, but Sean knows plenty of stuff about snowboarding and hiking and stuff, so it's always interesting to throw him a question. Uh, and bolt now. snaps. Then, I love questions about bolt snaps. Anything about a bolt snap, Oof. let us know down in the comments below. Don't forget to check out Simply Scuba. Um, we sell all sorts of interesting stuff, so it's worth checking it out. You can buy this t-shirt from our spring store if you're watching this on youtube there'll be a link underneath this video there's going to be a banner with a whole bunch of t-shirts uh, but there are plenty of other designs so click on those if you want to check them out um yeah thank you for watching everybody and of course safe diving stay classy scuba divers Bye.